Hello, and this is the second part of section 3-2 on polynomial functions, which I didn't get to in class today. So if you're watching this on YouTube, this is the part um, you'll need. So uh, all I'm going to do is look at this. Um, oh, I didn't talk about turning points. So a function with degree n has at most n minus 1 turning points and a turning point is uh, where where the just what it says it is it's where the graph turns from going uphill to downhill or from downhill to uphill so in this case this uh, function has two turning points it could have less than that but say that the most um, this would be the highest degree that this function could be would be um, actually no the most turning points this function could have is two if this were a cubic function so y equals I don't know like uh, x x minus one times x plus one times x plus two it's kind of hard to write here but um. So a turning point is nothing more, this thing is an erasing, no. A turning point is uh, nothing more than a maximum or a minimum. Okay, so um, in this function, how do I graph something like this? So um, what I want to do first is factor it. So to continue, I'm going to take this function here, and uh, first I want to erase this mess over here. So I don't want, want to do that. So um, oh well, I'm going to take this function here, and I'm going to factor it. So I'm going to take out an x squared from all three terms: x squared times x squared minus 2x minus 8 okay? and I'm going to set that equal to 0 and then I'm going to factor it completely which means factoring this part too so x and the reason I'm setting this equal to 0 is because I'm trying to show you that the roots are or the zeros are where this function is going to cross the x-axis and that's going to help me uh, graph it. So this thing in parentheses factors to x times x minus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0. It should have been a square right here. Okay, so the roots, if I see where all of these uh, factors are equal to 0, this is going to be 0 at x equals 0. This is going to be 0 at x equals 4. And this is going to be 0 at x equals negative 2. Okay? So now what I can do is I'm going to try to sketch a graph of this function using some of the rules that I learned about n behavior, turning points, and uh, factors. Okay? So um, I know that it has a double root or a... Um, multiplicity 2 root at 0. So what that means is at this point this function is going to bounce off the graph. It's either going to go like this or like this. At x equals 4 uh, this function is going to go through the graph right here and at x equals negative 2 and that's because it's an odd multiplicity. This bounces because it's even multiplicity and this one is going to go through at x equals negative 2 because that is odd multiplicity as well. So these are my three zeros, our roots. And now I need to look at the function itself. Okay, the leading coefficient is positive, and And this is an even function because the highest degree term is raised to an even power. So its end behavior from those rules that we learned earlier is going to start from the top and it's going to end from the top. If this were negative, it would start from the bottom and end from the bottom. So even functions start and end the same way. 
odd function start and end the opposite way. Okay, so I know that this one is coming down this way. Okay, I know that it's got to go through this point. I know that it has to bounce here. I know that it has to, uh, after it bounces, it has to get through this point exactly once and it has to end going up. So I know that this particular function looks something like that. And if you put that into your graphing calculator, um, it would look something like that if you zoomed in and zoomed out. So the degree is for the end behavior. You could talk about that way and that way on both the left and right end. The power function shape, if I zoomed out really, really far, I would see something that looks kind of like x to the fourth power. That's what they mean by that. The x-intercepts, well, those are my roots, which are 0, um, 4, and negative 2. The y-intercept I get, remember, by plugging in 0 into my function. So when I plug in 0 into here, I get out 0. So the y-intercept is 0, 0, which makes sense. We already have it on the graph. The multiplicity of the roots, well, the 0th root, this one, is multiplicity 2, this one is multiplicity 1, and this one is multiplicity 1 as well because it's degree 1, 1, and 2. Turning points, well the most uh, turning points I could have, could have is 3 because the power is 4, and if we see our graph by how we sketch it, there's 1, 2, 3 turning points, so that would be 3. Sketch graph using your calculator, I'll let you do that. Approximate the relative extrema. The relative extrema are the relative minimums and maximums. Well, I know that this one is exactly 0, 0. That's a, that's a relative maximum. This is a uh, relative minimum. This is a relative minimum. And you could get those by plugging those into your calculator. And then over here, uh, the domain of this is all real. Bye. And bye, good night. And the range of this is anything below the lowest point. So I suppose we would have to plug this into a graphing calculator and see what the range is. Okay, let's, why don't we do that? Okay, I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. So as you can see, um, my graph, I'm kind of on the right track with it. This is what it looks like when I put it into the calculator. Now what I did have to do, I did have to zoom. Uh, I wasn't catching the bottom of this. So I set my window from uh, my y values from negative 50 up to positive 10 and my x values from negative 5 to 10, I guess is what I did. So now I can figure out where the maximum and the minimums occur. This is one minimum, so I'm going to find that one by going second uh, calc minimum and uh, hit enter and then left bound. I come over here to where I think the minimum is, okay, except I want this first one over here, so I'm going to come over this way. A um, little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. So there's a left down, and then I'll say right down. I'm going to come somewhere over here, hit enter, and it's going to ask me to guess, and I'm going to guess. And it appears that that minimum occurs at about negative 2.88 and 45.33. So, um, negative... Where's that um, extrema? So that one would be negative 2.88. That's a relative minimum here. Negative 2.88. I wrote 2.84. And uh, negative 45.33. So you could see I had to adjust my window quite a bit to see that minimum. This minimum, I'll let you find. So the range, the reason I did that is because now the range is going to be from that bottom y value and up because I know it can't go below 
that minimum because it's increasing here and it's increasing that way. So the range is going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 45.33. Okay. Um, intervals on which the function is increasing. Okay. So again, those intervals, it's increasing from negative 45.33 to 0. And then again, from whatever this x value is up to infinity. And it's decreasing from negative infinity to this x value, which is negative 2.866 and from zero to whatever that minimum is, okay? And that's what it means by intervals of increasing and decreasing. So that's part two. Um, hopefully you'll be able to do some of that on your own. And this is Mr. Leader signing out.